Okay, it's time for episode two. I have my friend Topher here who's going to help us today. What are we going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about fly fishing. That's right, we're going to talk about fly fishing. All right, again, let's go over some of those flies that we need to catch at Durango. Actually, let's go some over, over some of the, the basics. Here we have a pair of nips. Important, important, important. And I just got it on a little. Really, all you need is this stuff. Dangle around your neck. I usually take out a fly bass full of all kinds of stuff, but uh, all my zingers broke. You can take one of my, my pennies under your floor. Yeah, you can try that. Yeah, we These can right here are four sets. We need to have leaders, have a fly box. All you really need is that green one right there, but we're going to open up that Orvis box back there as well. We need a fly reel, and of course, a fly pole. This is a nice bamboo rod. I'm in the process of restoring here. A couple of those projects I'm working on. But, let's I I use one of my pennies. Use one of your pennies? What are we gonna, how are we going to fish with one of your pennies? Aww. So open up this fly box and we have some of the flies we went over on the last episode. We got a bunch of bead heads right there. Uh, more bead heads, a strike indicator. And on the front here, we got some of those caddis flies. Now, let me see these flies. Here's uh, some of the dry flies that I like to use. They're mainly just versions of caddis flies. Uh, wow! Got a couple flying ants right there. Uh, some of those many flies. Some you see those flies? Blue duns. Uh, that's royal wolf. Those are all right. Some trichos. I like to see these. These little ones it's right here. Those black with the white, really small one. Those are trichos. My brother Jeff loves to fish with those. Those are his favorite. <coughs> Very effective for us. So that's all you need. And so what we're going to talk about now here is uh, set this camera up so you can kind of see what I'm drawing here. Let's talk about the, the cast. How do you want your your cast to look like? So you're this man right here. This fly rod in your hand. And you are bringing it back to here. So you get your fly line. You just brought it back. So all this line that you have here is whipping around. So forget this. You want when this line is straight back here, you want to hold it at about the so we got twelve, eleven, yeah, it's about ten. Somewhere between nine, nine and ten. And when you throw it forward, you want to throw it somewhere between one and and three. Or two. Three and two. Uh, but you want to wait. You don't have to do this in a very I mean this doesn't have to be done fast you can so here's our 12 o'clock position one two three here's our fly pole right about ten and we want to throw it back and wait for this line to catch up and get extended all the way back and then we'll throw it I mean you got to do this Caress them. I mean, it's it's a it's a charismatic cast. So you want to be very careful in the way you do, you do this in order to execute it correctly. But then you're going to throw your fly pole over here to the two o'clock position. So all this fly line is now going to come down, and it's going to go straight out. And when you're fishing with a dry fly, you just let that float down on top of the water, and that will make it look. 
just as natural as can be. It'll just extend all the way out. Hold it there. You don't have to tilt this rod down at the water because then your line's going to come down here and slap the water. That'll be bad. So, you got your guy here holding his rod at about 12, 1, 2, and all that line's going to come out here. This is after you've had it extended straight back. So you're going to go from yeah, 10 to 2. I mean, that's what they hear you, but really somewhere around there. You just don't want to flatten that rod out any past anything lower than, I would say, 3. Otherwise, that line's going to come down, and it's going to slap the top of the water, and all the fish are going to run away. Slap the top of the water? Yeah, slap the top of the water. You want it to look like a natural presentation. Whoa. Yes. That. All right. So that's all you need. I got all of these flies at Walmart. So and I got them at the Walmart in Durango. I would well most of those flies, those hair's ears. So we go down to the local Walmart there, buy some flies. Get you a pair of four steps. You need a uh, pair of nips. And that's just for cutting excess line, cutting line. These are for everything you can think you need them for. You need anything from taking the hook out of the fish's mouth, uh, whatever else. Uh, and then get you a, a reel that will hold the line. You have a good rod. And you're set to go, Glenn. You are set to go, buddy. Okay, that was just another quick little video over some of the, the flies that I think I missed on the last one and maybe just a little bit of a casting technique to get you started. Uh, next time I'll go out and I'll try to show it to you, but we're just kind of running out of time today. So, say bye to Topi. Bye. You're a good narrator, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, later on, Glenn.